Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. San Antonio police are searching for the person responsible for shooting a father and his four-year-old son. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you what we know. The, the nation erupts in protest against and in favor of the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. We have the latest on this historic ruling. And taking a live look out at the Elmo City, 77 degrees now. What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Saturday. It is June 25th. Thank you so much for starting your weekend with us. Good morning. Yeah, happy, happy weekend. Happy Saturday if you're up this early. Thank you for joining us. You were here like the what the past like 17 days. <laughs> Max is exaggerating. No, I was I was honored to be here yesterday mm -hmm. and we had a female Friday. Yes. At 9 a.m. We had an all women's newscast. Nice. Stephanie Cerna was my co-anchor and Katie Blake was our meteorologist. Nice. It was very cool. Chris uh, joked. He said he didn't get this. Chris, our, our director, said he didn't get the pink memo. I just said, you know, pink we wear. So Saturdays were pink. That's yeah, yeah, there you go. Hey, and female Friday. I like that. That was pretty cool. Right. Okay, but guys, today it's going to be hot. Oof. Okay. It's going to be hot all weekend long, but there are some things that I'm getting excited about. Changes in the forecast that we got to talk about. But this weekend is just going to be status quo. More of the same for us this weekend. Right now, outside, you can see the oh, cumulus clouds. I know. Nice first light of the day there. Uh, and it's 77 degrees outside right now. South winds at 10 miles per hour. It is humid out there right now, but those dew points are going to come down throughout the day. This is a look at the forecast highs. It'll be 101 here in San Antonio. It'll be 98 in Kerrville, 96 in Rock Springs, 104 in Del Rio, 100 in Beeville, 104 in Catula. And it'll be in the triple digits all weekend long for us. 101 today, 101 tomorrow. A plus forecast for us, uh, but it is going to be hot. A stray shower is possible tomorrow in the afternoon, but better rain chances in the week ahead and a temperature drop. I'll tell you what you need to know coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a terrifying situation at a home on the east side, a shooting involving a father and his son. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Jonathan, what have you been able to learn? Sarah, well, right now information is limited, but we do know San Antonio police are searching for the person who shot a 20-year-old man and his 4-year-old son. Now, this was the scene around 1.30 this morning. San Antonio police responding to this home on the 4800 block of Ray Bond Drive. This is on the city's east side. Now, they tell us someone entered the home and shot both the 20-year-old man and his 4-year-old son. They say the father was found with a single gunshot wound to the head while his 4-year-old son was shot in the nose. Now, Max and Sarah, surprisingly enough, they are both alive but in critical condition. Police tell us they do not have a description on that suspect and the investigation is ongoing. This is definitely a story that we're going to continue to bring you the latest as more information is made available to us. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Now to the top story across the country and right here in San Antonio, the U.S. Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. It wasn't a complete surprise, but the announcement still proving to spark emotional reactions. The high court's decision has now created more barriers for women and more than 500 people took to the streets of San Antonio to protest. They chanted with signs outside the downtown federal courthouse. Patty Santos was there and tells us why they say this is just the beginning of their march for change ahead. Well, this is a day of, to me, warning. I mean, we lost our rights. My daughter lost her rights. Several local organizations turned out to protest the Supreme Court's decision. All people who say they cannot sit back silently as history unfolds. It hits me especially hard, like knowing that I have all these women in my life and they're being hurt by this. There's a lot of us very, very scared right now. Texas doctors say this ruling will hurt women whose lives are at risk unless they terminate their pregnancy. People who are recently diagnosed with serious diseases such as cancer, while in the early stages of pregnancy, should also be free to get an abortion. There's also severe preeclampsia, lethal birth defects, and catastrophic medical complications that are reasons that other women undergo an abortion. Bottom line, they say this will affect women who are low income, minority and live in rural communities the most. Doctors say these are women who must act now to protect their bodies. See their doctor, get on birth control 
get on long acting birth control, like an IUD while it's still, you know, available. Um, and talk to your doctor about risks. There's a lot of anger and frustration in this crowd, but there's also a lot of motivation for the battle ahead. Two streets are streets. Two streets. Marching and voting is just the beginning. Continue to vote 100%, but I mean, at this point, I don't really know. I don't want to say that it's hopeless, and that's, that's exactly why we're here. That's why I brought them here, because I don't want them to give up, because I'm not giving up. No one should. So, I mean, at this point, we just keep fighting. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. The question now is, what can Texas expect after the Supreme Court ruling? Well, right now, women who are six weeks pregnant can face a civil lawsuit if they obtain abortion in Texas. And keep in mind, there is no exception for rape or incest. But with the court's ruling yesterday, those restrictions could become even tighter, and they would. In addition, the Supreme Court ruling activated a trigger law that will go into effect 30 days from the decision, so 29 days from today. After that time period, abortions would only be allowed in two events, if a patient's life is in danger or if they're at risk of substantial impairment of a major bodily function. Now, more protests and rallies expected across the country throughout today. Now, following the U.S. Supreme Court ruling to overturn Roe v. Wade, what we've been talking about throughout the morning. Well, the reaction was swift and passionate on both sides of this issue. ABC's Christine Sloan reports from New York. Across the country, excitement and anger after the Supreme Court's big decision overturning Roe versus Wade from professional athletes. Pro-choice allows other people to be pro-life if that is what works for them. Pro-life doesn't allow anybody to make a choice. To state leaders. That makes this Supreme Court decision the, the most life-saving decision in the history of our nation. Massive crowds swarming the streets of New York City, Boston, and beyond. President Biden condemned the decision. With Roe gone, let's be very clear. The health and life of women in this nation are now at risk. Inside the Capitol, opposing views from Democratic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy. It's a slap in the face to women about using their own judgment to make their own decisions about their reproductive freedom. Americans celebrate this historic victory because we know it will save the lives of millions of children. The 6-3 decision from the court's conservative majority upheld Mississippi's abortion ban after 15 weeks, five of those justices going even farther, voting to overturn Roe v. Wade itself. The court's liberal wing drafting a sharp dissent. Justice Stephen Breyer asserting Alito's ruling cleared the court due to three justices appointed by former President Donald Trump, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett, whose decisive votes overturned Roe. Thirteen states have trigger laws ending abortion access now that Roe is overruled. Thirteen more states are now expected to move quickly to ban abortion. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, authorities in Phoenix, Arizona, used tear gas to disperse a crowd protesting the Supreme Court abortion ruling in front of the Arizona State Capitol. Law enforcement says the protesters there repeatedly pounded on the glass doors of the state Senate building. They said some in the group vandalized a monument across the street from the state building, and that's when tear gas was used. The demonstrations came after several Arizona abortion providers announced they were preemptively pausing abortion services. A college hazing situation ends in trauma and one person in handcuffs. A University of Missouri hazing incident left a student seriously incapacitated and now one of the three men charged for the hazing left the courtroom in handcuffs after his hearing. Thomas Schultz charged in the October 2021 incident that left Danny Santoli unable to walk, unable to see. Schultz is accused of giving the 19-year-old alcohol during a pledge event at the Phi Gamma Delta House. His bond now set for $50,000. His lawyer did file a motion to have his bond lowered. A new judge has been assigned to the case and will hear his bond reduction request on Monday. Ali Alexander, who is referred to as the leader of the Stop the Steal group, testified no crimes were committed before a federal grand jury yesterday in Washington, D.C. 
His testimony is part of the Justice Department's confidential criminal investigation, which is separate from the Congressional Committee investigating the attack, which Alexander has also testified in front of weeks ago. So Alexander helped organize rallies before the Capitol attack. He claims to have ties to influential white right-wing figures close to former President Donald Trump, members of Congress, and extremist groups. Time now, 610, 76 degrees out. So to come, inflation is the rising cost of all home and prices and rentals across the country, including mobile homes. So we'll tell you just how much more the price tag has increased. And Google says spyware has been used to hack Apple and Android phones overseas. Coming up, the company that they're calling out and they say is responsible for this invasion of privacy. Okay, it's, I know it's- Oh, oh it's beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful, despite the, you know, what's to come <laughs> later today. <laughs> 76 degrees at 610, I love those, that pink streak yeah. across the sky. Go out and enjoy it right now <laughs> while you can. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. So, have you been out and about in the garden recently? Um, early, early in the morning. Okay, or, No, 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 not early in the morning, because I'm working here early in the morning. Uh, like, late in the morning, <laughs> but it's still already very warm by that mm. time, Sarah. Yeah, it's pretty humid out there, too, but I bet your garden's not doing so well, huh? I mean, I'm doing a lot of hand watering. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> aggressively maybe like once in the morning once in the evening right the only way to keep it things alive and I want to put things in perspective for folks so 2022 up to June 25th is the third driest year so far so back in 2008 we had a little bit uh, closer to four inches of rainfall so it is very very dry out there and we could use some rain here's the thing we do see rain chances go up next week. The best chance for rain we've had in a while in South Central Texas. Uh, starting Monday, we'll see some isolated showers and storms and then widely scattered showers and storms through about Thursday. Our best chance for rain is Tuesday, but even then it's only about a 40% chance. So at least we have the chance for rain. Rain will be widely scattered, so not everybody is going to get some good rain, but at least there's the chance there, and that'll impact our temperatures too, helping us be cooler. Speaking of cooler, that's not the weather for today. Let's talk about the weather today. Today we will be hot. It's 77 degrees outside right now. You're seeing the first light of the day there. It is humid with dew points near 70 degrees. Thankfully, that humidity will come down throughout the day, but it is very muggy outside right now. Wake up temperatures. It's 80 in Del Rio, 73 in uh, Hondo, 75 in Pleasanton, 76 in Gonzales, 74 in New Braunfels, and 73 in Kerrville. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast calls for these partly cloudy skies to stick around through the early morning hours here. It'll be 84 by 10. As we head into the lunch hour, temperatures are, will start to climb to near 90 degrees right around noon. Winds today will be from the south at about 10 to 15 miles per hour, gusting up to about 20. So there will be a bit of a breeze and then we'll top off at 101 degrees at 5, 6 p.m. Yesterday we were at 101 today. It's going to look a lot like yesterday. Tomorrow will be similar too. Elsewhere, neighborhood highs 101 in New Braunfels and in Seguin, 101 in Hondo, 102 in Divine, 102 in Pleasanton, 102 in Givaldi. Just a hair cooler up in the hill country, 97 in Bernie and 99 in Comfort, but still hot everywhere. All right, I want to show you what we got going on. The heat high is what is continuing to make it hot and what will continue to make it hot tomorrow. But look at all of the rainfall across parts of the Rockies and up toward the Midwest. This is along a cool front, which is going to shake up our weather forecast. And it is quite a bit cooler behind this front. It's 47 degrees in Casper, Wyoming. We are not going to get into the 40s. We're not even going to get into the 60s. But this is going to allow for our temperatures to, to moderate back to uh, uh, more average by the start of the week, but we have to wait for it. Tomorrow's going to be another hot day, 101 degrees here in San Antonio. Then that front is going to move through slowly on Monday. At the same time, tropical moisture is going to move in from the Gulf of Mexico. So this is why we have a chance for scattered showers and storms Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and even possibly into Thursday, depending how long that tropical moisture sticks around. Not everybody will receive healthy rain. 
rains, but the chance for rain is there. And that is a start, especially when we are seeing exceptional and extreme drought. Once again, widely uh, scattered showers and storms Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday and temperatures still going to be warm, still going to even be hot at times, but at least we won't be in the triple digits. Monday will be in the mid 90s. Tuesday, we may struggle to get out of the 80s and we'll be in the low to mid 90s Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So guys, some changes in the forecast for us. That's some good news coming up, though. If you want to soak up the sun this weekend, I've got your poolside forecast. Max and Sarah. All right, look at all that rain on the forecast. I so like exciting. it. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. 618, 76 degrees out. All right, up next, Netflix says their subscriptions are down, and now they're going to be letting go of hundreds of their employees. We'll tell you about that in just a bit. And another tech company to tell you about, Google says a number of Apple and Android phones have been hacked overseas. Find out who Google is now blaming. In your business news, Google says spyware has been used to hack Apple and Android phones overseas. The tech giant says the Italian company RCS Lab is behind hacking tools that spy on devices, private messages and contacts. The tools were used on smartphones in Italy and Kazakhstan. Google says it has alerted users of its Android operating system about the spyware and has taken steps to protect them. Apple has not reacted to this report. The lab says its products and services comply with European rules and are used to help law enforcement agencies investigate crimes. Well, the streaming giant Netflix is now letting go of 300 more employees. And this comes just a month after 150 other Netflix employees lost their jobs. And the company says it is adjusting its costs to grow in line with the slower revenue growth. About 221 million people currently subscribe to Netflix. But in April, Netflix announced it actually lost subscribers. And that loss in subscribers was the first time in more than a decade. Its stock plummeted about 70% so far this year. And we've talked about it. It just seems there are so many streaming options nowadays. Do you subscribe to Netflix or do you use someone's account? I don't even use Netflix anymore. What? I know. This is why you're I'm one not of the watching people. the same shows as I me. I know. I'm mm. all about HBO Max now. Since you had your name in it. Mm. All right. <laughs> Time now is 623, 76 degrees out. All right, coming up, an increase in demand combined with low supply have increased the cost of mobile homes. We break down how much more expensive these homes have become. Good morning and welcome back. In your consumer news, Congress approving the extension of the Keep Kids Fed Act, meaning Tens of millions of kids will still be able to eat for free at school this summer and into next year. The extension puts nearly $3 billion towards a number of types of waivers. Now, school meal waivers started going out last year during the pandemic. It allowed children to get free meals at school regardless of their income. But the extension won't cover as many kids now and will require more low-income families to apply for the program before the school year starts. Plus, kids who qualify for reduced-price meals will have to start paying once again. Inflation and skyrocketing home prices have pushed rents higher, and that's having an impact on mobile homes. So roughly 20 million Americans live in mobile homes. Recent high de demand and low supply have increased the cost. According to the Washington Post, the average new home prices grew by 22% since the start of the pandemic for mobile homes. Over that same period, mobile home prices have jumped almost 50%. You just can't, you you can't, can't win anyway. You can't win. No. Time now, 627, 76 degrees out. All right, LinkedIn is a professional networking tool for of choice for employers to mm. find new hires. But what you put on there could have a big impact. Still ahead, what mistakes you may be making on LinkedIn that could cost you the job. A man is shot in the parking lot of a car wash in San Antonio. Police are searching for the person involved. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you the latest. Good morning, welcome back and happy weekend. 631 this morning. How's the hair doing with the humidity? I'm sweating in here. Well, it's just because it's hot in here. No, no, no. Look at us conserving but some, energy. But sometimes, yeah. because it's so humid, haunting humidity. We talked about that. The it, haunting humidity. It, what, for those like who are just joining us, explain haunting humidity. Okay, so you walk outside, it's super humid. You're, mm -hmm. you know, you're sweating like crazy. Then you come inside and you're blast with AC, but you can't stop sweating because the humidity is just on your skin. 
Sarah, please, you understand. Sarah Spy, we need to get haunting humidity <laughs> on a graphic. I don't know what the scientific evidence of that is, but I'll give it to you, Sarah. <laughs> hey, you know what? You might want to cool off by a pool today. So here's your uh, poolside forecast for your Saturday. Winds will be from the south today at 5 to 15 miles per hour. No chance for rain. By noon, we'll be at 90 degrees. And in the afternoon, forecasting high temperature of 101. That UV index is going to be extreme today because of total sunshine. Skin damage time in less than 10 minutes. And if you're planning on going out to uh, many of our local parks around south central Texas, it's going to be hot. Pack plenty of water and sunscreen. Temperatures will be near 100 degrees at Devil's River, Enchanted Rock, Government Canyon, Guadalupe River, Hill Country State Natural Area, and Los Maples State Natural Area. It is going to be a hot one out there all across South Central Texas today and tomorrow. But hey, there is hope for rain in our future. Showers and storms will be widely scattered next week, but the chance for rain is there. Coming up, I'm going to detail this and talk about the tropics, how they could be sending some moisture our way too. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, one man in the hospital after a shooting near the medical center. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Jonathan, we know this incident happening just a few hours ago, so what's the latest? Sir, well, I can tell you it certainly has been a busy morning for San Antonio police and the staff over at University Hospital who have been dealing with a number of shootings this morning. The man shot rushed over to their emergency room in critical condition. But let's take a look at what that scene looked like close to 2.30 this morning. The parking lot of an easy wash on the 8900 block of Data Point. This is near Medical Center. Over 20 shell casings littered across the park. Now, now police tell us a 55-year-old man was shot in the head. Now, Max, Sarah, they tell us uh, they don't know what exactly led up to the shooting. They do not have a clear description of the person involved in the shooting. But the good thing here is that police are hopeful they'll have more information as they've been questioning several people who were in that area. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Happening today, the final funeral service for the victims of the Robb Elementary School shooting. Now, services will be held for Usia Garcia this morning, 10 a.m. in San Angelo. His family remembers him as a loving, sweet, outgoing, energetic, and smart child. Now, through heartache, the community of Uvalde is pulling together, trying to hold on to some sense of normalcy. So yesterday it held a graduation ceremony for the high school seniors. John Paul Barajas was there and has more on the ceremony that took place on with a solemn tone. A month ago, we thought it was going to happen that Friday. So we've been through so much. It's an emotional evening for us, but we're so proud of these kids. Families overwhelmed by emotion filed into the stands at Uvalde's high school graduation. Tonight, their students are walking the stage, a rite of passage that was stolen from many of the victims at Robb Elementary. All 19 students and two teachers honored at the ceremony. We will always remember the victims and the wounded of Robb Elementary. Less than three miles away, the memorial site continues to grow. Keep their memories alive, keep their stories alive. We don't want them to be forgotten. We are gonna keep continuing to share their memories in honor of their families. On May 24th, the school was swarmed by law enforcement and surrounded by parents trying to get to their kids. Now it's surrounded by flowers that over time have started to turn brown and wilt, along with other things like photos and mementos that have taken a beating from the weather. That's why San Antonio nonprofit Social Donations made these plaques with the victims' names, pictures, and even words from their obituaries to give the community here a more permanent and weather-resilient addition to the memorial. Each one of them had beautiful life, had beautiful memories, families. Vanessa Rodriguez with the nonprofit explained, the support is helping Uvalde residents heal. She says it's important not to forget what happened, but also to continue living life. These seniors have faced a tragedy and are now looking towards a hopeful future. After it happened, the tragedy, he wasn't gonna walk, but he decided he wanted to, to do. He's just ready to get it done and go on to Texas Tech University. John Paul Barajas, KSAT. 12 news. Well, happening today, President Joe Biden is expected to sign into law the latest gun measure passed by both the Senate and the House. Now, the measure would bolster mental health programs. It would toughen background checks for the youngest gun buyers. It would keep firearms for dom from domestic violence offenders, and it would help states enforce existing red flag laws. Here in Texas, our state does not have a red flag law. The measure sent to President Biden's desk did have bipartisan support, but 
It did not address raising the age requirement to buy assault style weapons. And nowadays, no matter where you go, you have to keep in mind that an active shooter situation just could happen. That's why local law enforcement and businesses are training people to make quick decisions that could save their lives. This weekend, there are several opportunities for you to learn and practice life-saving skills. Uh, Krav Maga Hardy Fitness Gym is hosting an active shooter seminar later today to bolster the survival instinct in anyone 12 years and up. It'll focus on how to stop a shooter and disarm them. Nobody's ever told people how or shown people how to fight with a person that has a handgun or a long gun when you know you got to fight. I'm not going to get in a fist fight with them. The active shooter seminar at the STW Krav Maga and Hardy Fitness Gym is this morning from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. It will also include a quick stop the bleed course and the shirts police is also putting on a civilian response to active shooter event today. That's happening from 9 a.m. to noon at the shirts EMS training room in building seven. Speaking of active, active shooter situations, has violent crime seemed like it's been on the rise here in the Alamo City? This morning alone, we talked about a father and son both shot in their home on the east side. It seems like almost every morning there are worse and worse shootings to tell you about. Last weekend, we actually heard from Police Chief William McManus. He spoke to us at the scene of what started as a family barbecue and ended with seven people shot. Now, Chief McManus is set to join us tomorrow morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m. We want to talk about local crime, the reasons behind it, and what is being done. Now, if you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., for our full conversation. Time now, 638, 76 degrees out. All right, later in the newscast, we're talking French cuisine that has a Texas twist Ooh. that's coming up in your Texas Eats. Is that a piece of meat? I don't know what's oh, well, going that on there. Like ravioli. I'm in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, are you on LinkedIn? Not. Yes, but I don't. Per, I don't. I'm not active. On okay. Find me on LinkedIn. How about that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> After the break, we're taking a look at the most costly mistakes that you could be making if you're on LinkedIn and future employers or wannabe employers find you there. Catch me on LinkedIn. How about, How about that? that? <laughs> How about that? 76 degrees, 639. Sarah Spivey says it's going to be another hot one, but there is hope in sight. She'll explain when we come back. All right, 72% of recruiters use LinkedIn to find talent, and according to Finances Online, the number of new hires found through LinkedIn has more than doubled in the past quarter. All right, so that's why whether you have a job or you're looking for one, you need to focus on your online profile. Having a page is simply not enough. And as RJ Marquez reports, it's actually what you put on the page what counts. Susan Pagan Hilton uses LinkedIn for hiring and for helping university students find jobs. But with 83 million users, how can you make your profile stand out? It's all about branding for me. You want to make sure you have a professional, friendly, colorful, bright headshot. But no selfies. The other important thing that really stands out that a lot of people kind of neglect is the title, the headline that comes under your name. List the professional skill sets directly under your name. Instead of manager, put manager slash content creator slash multimedia specialist slash project leader. One big mistake people make is not filling out their contact info. It's imperative, especially if you're a creative, to have your website, your demo reel, your portfolio. Another big mistake, leaving the summary blank. You want to make it 80% professional and 20%, you know, like fun or friendly. Be sure your resume and LinkedIn profile match. Don't skip recommendations. It not only shows that, you know, what a professional you are, but how you work with others. And don't forget to update it regularly. You constantly have to nourish it and feed it and grow it and develop it. It's your brand. It's who you are. Be sure your resume and LinkedIn profile match. The number of connections you have is also important. Less than 50 can be a red flag that you're not connected in your industry. Also, keep in mind that most employers spend less than 15 seconds scanning a profile before deciding to continue or not. And an incomplete profile is the number one reason employers move on to the next one. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Okay, so a rare event, Mike Osterhage was talking about mm. it yesterday morning. It happened yesterday in the morning between around 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. But in case you missed it, five planets aligned themselves in planetary order. So it was a crescent moon, joined the party between Venus and Mars. This rare phenom phenomenon has not occurred since December of 2004. You can see right there, that was taken right outside of KSAT. Oh. You can't see Saturn, it was too far away. 
Um, couldn't get, really get in the shot there. But the Beautiful. distance between Mercury and Saturn was smaller. So according to Sky and Telescope, if you miss the five planet alignment in sequential order, it won't happen again till 2040. I'm just going to pass it to Sarah's by because I don't have much to add here. I did not see this. Um, but it, it was pretty, it was not the clearest Sarah yeah. yesterday. There's a little uh, bit of clouds. Yeah. So, and of course, if you're trying to find it in downtown San Antonio, there's buildings covering <laughs> certain things, but it was, it was nice to see. A lot of light pollution, but some folks did get to see it. So that's some good news. The sun is up and we are on our way to another hot day outside right now. It is 77 degrees outside, partly cloudy skies, a few clouds out there. It is humid with dew points in the 70s, but watch what happens to the humidity today. It does come down in the afternoon. Dew points will fall into the 50s as early as 2 p.m. So even though it's going to be hot, at least there won't be much of a heat index value later this afternoon. Elsewhere, it's 80 in Del Rio, 74 in Pleasanton, 76 in Gonzales, 74 in New Braunfels, 73 in Kerrville, and 73 in Hondo. Across the state of Texas, it's very mild. Temperatures are in the 70s, but look to the north. Across the Rockies, temperatures are in the 40s. It's even 58 degrees in Denver right now. There's a cool front. This is going to shake up our weather, not necessarily making it feel cool outside, but it is going to bring us our first chance for decent rain in a while. And around this front right now, you can see that there's plenty of showers and thunderstorms, especially across the Midwest. But this weekend, the heat high is going to be our dominant weather factor, compressing the air, making it hotter outside during the afternoons. And that's why today and tomorrow will be once again near 100 degrees, but this time of year, we do need to check on the tropics. Let's take a look out in the Atlantic. There is a, a potential uh, system here that could develop a 60% chance of development in the next five days. So good chance of development until at least a tropical depression. But really, the thing that's going to impact our weather more immediately is the potential for some development in the Gulf of Mexico. Now it's a low chance of development, only a 20% chance that some of these showers and storms in Florida could develop in the Gulf of Mexico. But regardless of development, we are going to see some tropical moisture head our way uh, through the Gulf of Mexico early next week from about Monday through Thursday. And so that coupled with that front moving in, from the north is why we have a chance for widely scattered showers and storms. Monday, as that front moves through, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, as that tropical moisture hangs around. So again, the chance for showers and storms is relatively low, 30 to 40% as far as coverage goes, but it is the best chance for rain that we've seen in a while, and it's going to knock down temperatures by a few degrees in the week ahead. So at least we have a weather pattern shift ahead. Still, though, this weekend is just going to be hot. So as you're planning your day, here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. We'll be at 84 by 10 a.m. with some clouds out there, mostly sunny skies, 90 at noon. And then in the afternoon, forecasting a high temperature in San Antonio of 101 under mostly sunny to completely sunny skies. We'll have southeast winds 5 to 15 miles per hour, so a bit of a breeze. Elsewhere, it'll be 104 in Del Rio, 103 in Eagle Pass, 103 in Carrizo Springs, 101 in Gonzales. 101 in New Braunfels and 101 in San Antonio. Quite a bit above average. Our average high temperature this time of year is 93. We're going to be at 101 today and tomorrow. Notice that those widely scattered showers and storms develop in the week ahead. As far as rainfall totals go, it's going to be tricky to nail down exactly who gets good rain and who misses out completely. But we could be looking at a tenth to two tenths uh, to three tenths of an inch of rainfall. So again, not a great amount of rain, but the chance is there and it knocks those temperatures down into the low 90s, which is closer to the seasonable average. Max and Sarah. I like that. Me too. More rain than triple digit days. Excited about 95 degrees. Time now, 649, 76 what degrees. What a time out. to be alive. All right, still to come on. That Ooh. looks amazing. We're traveling to Bernie for some Parisian food that offers you a unique flavor inspired by the great. Okay, yes. In Texas, oh, let's go. We can do that. That's coming up in Texas Eats. It's delicious. Let's take a live look. My mouth is watering now. That was like a hamburger inside oh, a, a little beef, puff pastry. Is it a beef Wellington? Is that what that was? A yeah. big, a big old one. Loved it. All right, taking a live look out there at the roadways. It is calm and quiet. Love to see this. Hopefully some people are sleeping in. It is Saturday morning. Relaxed. 
Stay up with us. Hey, start your day with KSAT. Start your day by winning some lottery. Pick three Goodness. numbers. Two, what three, two. Fireball four. Daily four. Five, seven, zero, four. Fireball six. Did you play? No, and it's up, it's like past 300 million. Cash five, three, five, six, eight, 29. And here we go. Mega Millions, one, seven, 11, 25, 56. Big number 14. Mega Plier two. Good luck. We'll be right back. Welcome back. A big show on Texas Eats today, 10 a.m. David Elder taking us to Bernie. The staff there is serving up a Texas-inspired French cuisine. It looked like a puff pastry. Take a look. This is a, a traditional rest, French restaurant, but we put like some Texas twists on it in some of the dishes. I want to try here. I'm going to start with the Wellington. Okay, let's do it. And I mean, this, the presentation alone is just over the top. I love the accents there on the puff pastry. Oh. <laughs> is it? We have it. Oh, yeah, that is a great presentation. How about it? Oh, wow. <laughs> Chef, that is. One of the best bites I've had the entire year. Thank you, thank you very much. This beef wellington is one of my favorite bites I've had the entire year. The puff pastry on the outside has just a nice crunchy texture. On the inside, the steak is super tender. The duck cell, all those mushrooms are super earthy and it adds a really nice flavor as well as the prosciutto, adds that saltiness that you want. And you put that veal broth on top, it is just out of control fire. And I completely understand why they sell out of these things every day. Yeah, no, that makes sense. They sell out. Yeah, Max was like, you don't go there thinking about calories. No. No. The puff pastry. Would and you the split it or would you eat it on Oh, your you eat it all. But that's oh. like the, the brunch. It's like the meal of the day. Time now, 654, 76 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. San Antonio police investigating several shootings happening this morning. The first one at a home in a neighborhood on the city's east side. This was the scene around 1.30 this morning. Police responding to the home on the 4800 block of Raybon Drive. Police tell us the father and his son were sitting in their living room when someone entered the home and shot both of them. They say the 20-year-old father had a single gunshot wound to the head, while his four-year-old son was shot in the nose. Now, surprisingly, both of them are alive but in critical condition. They were taken to University Hospital, and the investigation is ongoing. Now, this was the scene close to 2.30 this morning. The parking lot of this easy wash on the 8900 block of Data Point. This is near Medical Center, littered with over 20 shell casings. Police tell us a 55-year-old man was shot in the head. Now, in this case, it's unclear what led up to the shooting. Police do not have a clear description on the suspect, but are looking to find answers as they are questioning people who were in the area. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Well, today we are going to be more of the same. We're going to be hot today. 90 at noon, 101 for the high temperature. Sunsets at 837. It'll be a warm evening. Winds will be from the south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Elsewhere, temperatures should range anywhere from the upper 90s in the hill country up to about 103, 102 degrees. Looking ahead, similar weather. Ditto weather tomorrow for your Sunday, other than a stray shower in the afternoon. And then look at those rain chances. They start to go up. Uh, you know, we'll have widely scattered showers and storms. Not everybody's it's going to see beneficial rain, but it is going to allow for our temperatures to head down into the low 90s, even struggling to get out of the 80s on Tuesday, guys. So changes are coming. Continue to check back in with us as we refine that forecast. Could this help the drought conditions that we've seen? I've, no, unfortunately. Uh, it, it might alleviate drought conditions briefly in spots, but we're under extreme and exceptional It's like drought. spraying a water bottle, but nothing's actually soaking into the ground. That's a good analogy okay. there. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. We're going to take an hour-long break. We're going to see you back here at 8 a.m. Hey, and Jonathan Goto, he's going to be live with the group putting on the Pride Festival that's happening later today. Right, we'll see you back here at 8 o'clock. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Starting this hour with a live look at the roads with TransGuide. So far, not seeing any major issues on the road. If anything pops up, we'll let you know about it. Now, let's take a live look. Look at that. It is beautiful out there, and it is what I'm going to call a cool 77 degrees. Only that because, you know, 
Why not? We're going back to the status quo later today. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. For now, it is Saturday, June 25th. And we're going to get to weather in just a moment. But first, just a few minutes ago, President Biden signed the bipartisan gun safety bill. So the president signing the legislation in the White House's Roosevelt Room. This measure aims to strengthen background checks for the youngest gun buyers, close the so-called boyfriend loophole, and incentivize the states to pass red flag laws. It is the most significant federal gun restrictions we've seen in decades. So we do expect to hear from the president, and we will have more on that throughout the morning. But first, like Max alluded to, another triple digit day most likely, Sarah, but there is hope in our future. Yeah, next week, the weather looks at least normal for this time of year, which is the good news. Normal this time of year means occasional rain chances and temperatures in the low to mid 90s. That's what next week looks like. But this weekend we have to get through some more heat. Take a look outside right now. Look at that beautiful view. Nice cumulus clouds there, almost picturesque early this morning, but it certainly feels humid and warm out there. 78 degrees with dew points in the 70s. It feels like it's 80. We've got winds from the west southwest at 13 miles per hour. Today, going to be another hot one, potentially our 21st triple digit day this year. 101 in San Antonio is the forecast high, 101 in New Braunfels. It'll be even hotter out west, 102 in Pleasanton, 98 in Kerrville. But guess what? This entire weekend is going to be in the triple digits. Today, 101, tomorrow, 101, but an off chance for a stray shower in the afternoon. So find a splash pad, find a way to stay cool. And then next week, though, as I mentioned, we do expect some changes in the form of rain chances and at least cooler temperatures. I'll have a look ahead coming up in a bit. Sarah Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, another violent night here in the Alamo City. San Antonio police investing two separate shootings. Now, the first one they're investigating just before 1.30 a.m. on Raybon Drive near Ritterman Road. Police tell us a man and his four-year-old son were in their living room. Someone got into the house and shot both of them, the father and the son. Now, the man was shot in the head. The little boy hit in the nose, both taken to the hospital at last check in serious condition. Right now, investigators still working to figure out what exactly happened, why it happened, and who was responsible. Police are also looking for the suspect in another overnight shooting. This one ending with a man being shot in the head. It happened a little before 2.30 on Data Point near Fredericksburg Road. Investigators tell us the man was in the parking lot of a laundromat when he was shot in the head. At least 28 shell casings were found in the area. He was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Well, the big story of the morning, the aftermath of the Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade. We've seen protests and rallies across the country yesterday, and we expect them to continue through today. Now, one of the many top priorities is the safety of the Supreme Court justices, the Supreme Court and its facilities. Here in San Antonio, over 500 people outraged over that ruling marched outside the federal courthouse. The march was organized by several local groups who say this is just the first of many rallies and some of the women we spoke to say they are scared, frustrated and outraged. Any other right that is not already enumerated specifically laid out in the Constitution, any of those other rights can be taken away as well. So everybody should be scared. Some Texas OBGYN say the decision is going to impact more than just women who want to terminate unwanted pregnancies, but also women whose desired pregnancies put their life at risk. Now we are clearly staying on top of this story as it continues to develop, including Texas laws, what it means for people in Texas and around the country. And we have the latest reaction to the news. You can read all about this right now on KSAT.com. You can look for all the stories on the homepage and, of course, throughout the morning. Happening today, the final funeral service for the last victim of the Robb Elementary shooting. Now, services will be held for Usia Garcia at 10 a.m. in San Angelo. Now, his family remembers him as a loving, sweet, outgoing, energetic, and smart child. Meanwhile, many questions remain, and the families are still trying to cling to any sense of normalcy. So yesterday, Uvalde High School seniors getting to walk the stage for graduation. Now remember, this graduation ceremony was set for the Friday of when the shooting happened. Oh, the ceremony was optional. That happened yesterday. Still had a big turnout. Clearly an emotional day. 
a month ago we thought it was going to happen that Friday so we've been through so much it's an emotional evening for us but we're so proud of these kids the shooting victims were honored at the ceremony the graduating class said they would never forget the lives that were lost they were also asking for change so a similar tragedy would not happen again and following the tragedy in Uvalde, businesses here are working to teach people the skills they need to stay safe just in case anything like that were to happen. That's right. So Pete Hardy is a self-defense instructor who owns STW Krav Maga and Hardy Fitness Gym. Today, the gym will be hosting an active shooter seminar. The goal is to give people those tools they need to stop an active shooter and disarm them. Nobody's ever told people how or shown people how to fight with a person that has a handgun or a long gun when you know you got to fight. I'm not going to get in a fist fight with him. The active shooting seminar happening today, 11 to 1. Now, Shirts Police also putting on a civilian response to an active shooter event. That is happening today as well. You can find info on both events right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Also happening today, a mega pet adoption event. 13 San Antonio area rescue groups will be coming together for the event. This is the first time this has happened in a very long time. The free event is happening at the Shrine Auditorium from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. All adopted dogs and cats will be vaccinated, spayed or neutered and microchipped. And you can boogie the night away at the San Antonio Zoo. They are extending their hours today for the Jungle Boogie Nights. It's also Locals Day at the zoo. That means that Bear County residents can get in for just $8. The zoo was open today, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Have you been to the zoo and seen the new uh, Jaguar Skywalk? No. It is so, so, so cool. I okay. And they, one of them likes to hang out up there. $8. Go see you at Jungle Boogie tonight. There you go. 807, 77 degrees out. All right, after the break, our Jonathan Cotto is live at the big Pride Festival. And as you saw out there, the sun is out. Look at that beautiful sky. Only 77 now, so Jonathan is lucky to be outside. For now. But what is the rest <laughs> of the day going to look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Well, good morning and welcome back. All month we've been celebrating Pride and today is Pride Day. Our Jonathan Cotto is live with the preview of a big festival this morning. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. That's right. I'm here at Crockett Park and we're getting ready to celebrate Pride Bigger Than Texas here. It's an event that first kicked off last week on the 18th uh, at the zoo. And now it's going to end uh, the Pride Month here at Crockett Park with just a number of activities. We have vendors already setting up. There's going to be drag queen performances, live music. There's already about two stages in the works. Uh, there's a number of volunteers that are participating. And Pride Week San Antonio is gathering the equality-minded San Antonio metropolitan community to celebrate and promote hope and awareness of equality and diversity through a cavalcade of events. This is according to Pride San Antonio. Now, the mission here of Pride Week San Antonio is to harness the proud spirit of equality-minded residents of the San Antonio metropolitan area and working and facilitating the needs of individuals so that individuals can facilitate the needs of the community. So this is Pride Bigger Than Texas. It's happening today starting at 11 from uh, starting at 11 to 7.30 p.m. Again, there's going to be just a number of different entertainers, drag queens, live music and again lots lots of food and as you mentioned earlier it feels good outside right now but i know those temperatures are going to climb so make sure if you plan to come out put you on your spf cake it on and definitely definitely hydrate back to you in the studio max and sarah some good advice from jonathan Cotto. yeah thank you thank jonathan, you, jonathan. You gotta get the big hat out there <laughs> yeah big hat lots oh yeah of, lots of sunscreen jonathan, what uh, what spf are we throwing on here um, I'm talking SBF 50 oh, and yes. higher because <laughs> yeah, the, the, the sun, kind that you know, it feels you. good. 
<laughs> yeah, it feels good right now, but I can definitely feel those sun rays on my face right now. So it's just a matter of time before it just gets a little miserable, but it's going to be fun. And that's all that matters. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> all right. So Sarah Spivey, how, uh, how miserable is it going to get out there? Hey, okay, it's all good. Yeah. I like I liked seeing the sun rays on Jonathan's face. Yeah, it was nice. Great lighting. There. It's key. It, it's going to once again be close to 100 degrees this mm. afternoon, guys. And it has been a dry start to the week. In fact, it went back and I to the year rather I went back and I looked at uh, other years past since records have been taken in 1885 take a look at this up to this point up to June 25th this is the third driest start to a year we've ever had 2008 and 1925 beat us out they're pretty dry but we need need rain desperately and it's really just not going to happen this weekend, but in the week ahead, we do have much better rain chances. Widely scattered showers and storms possible Monday through Thursday in the week ahead because of two things, a cool front and some tropical moisture. So we'll talk about that in a bit. But first, I want to get you through this weekend. It is going to be hot this weekend. It's 78 degrees outside right now, but it feels like it's 80 degrees outside because of the dew points that are up there. Dew points are high now, but they'll come down later on in the afternoon. At least we won't have to deal with the heat index value. It's 77 in Pleasanton, 78 in Gonzales, 78 in New Braunfels, 75 in Hondo, and 79 in Del Rio. Here's your KSAT 12-hour forecast. We'll already be at 90 degrees by noon. Mostly sunny skies this afternoon, 96 at 2 p.m., and we'll be at 100 degrees by 4. Winds will be from the southeast at 5 to 15 miles per hour, topping off at 101 in San Antonio, and closer to sunset temperatures will be back in the 90s. So how hot is it going to be in your neighborhood? 100 degrees in Canyon Lakes. 97 in a Lotus, 97 in Bulverde, 101 in Hondo, 102 in at Stinson area, 102 Nixon Smiley, 102 in Yavaldi. Well, let's get down to business. Let's talk about things working in our favor for at least some rain in the week ahead. Unfortunately, this heat high is is maintaining its strength over the weekend. That's why we're going to be hot tomorrow too. But you can see up to the north and to the west, there's a cool front that's pushing through the Rockies and the Central Plains right now. It's 55 in Denver, 48 in Casper, Wyoming, producing some rain across the Midwest. And although we're not going to get down into the 40s, we are going to see temperatures become more seasonably appropriate for this time of year. Not tomorrow, though, with 101 in the forecast uh, for our high temperature tomorrow. So another hot day, but that front will be approaching Monday. It'll spark off a few showers and storms. And then at the same time as that front moves through, we're going to get some tropical moisture in from the Gulf of Mexico. Mexico, and that will allow for rain chances to stay in the forecast through Thursday. Now we're not talking about widespread drought denting rain across South Central Texas, but what we are talking about is the chance for widely scattered showers and storms for most of next week, next week. So although you may not get as much rain as you want in your backyard, there's at least a chance for showers and storms Monday through Thursday, and look at what that does for temperatures too. Our highs will only be in the low to mid 90s. We may even struggle to get out of the 80s on Tuesday. That is a welcome change in my mind from the triple digit heat that will likely continue to get in July and August. So nice to see a little break there coming up, though. If you are planning on catching some rays by the pool, I've got your poolside forecast. Max, Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 817, 77 degrees out. Here's a look at what's coming up next. And I'll be talking to the passengers, uh, and they'll be saying, you know, my I came down here and rode this when I was a child with my mother or grandmother, and it brings back wonderful memories. She's talking about the nostalgia of the San Antonio Zoo Train, one of my favorite stories I've ever done. After the break, we're going to introduce you to this very special train conductor. You don't want to miss her message of doing what she loves. Good morning and welcome back. So the San Antonio Zoo train has been chugging around Brackenridge Park since 1956. And of course, it has become a local treasure. Oh, I love the train. And one of the conductors behind our city gem is another treasure. We're talking about Retta Minnis. She's been driving the train for 15 years. 19,000 trips, 38,000 miles. <laughs> That's larger than the circumference of the earth. <laughs> 
first time on my second time around this, this uh, my world tour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I sure do love Retta's laugh. She started as a conductor after she retired from her state job of 30 years. She knew she wanted to do something completely different. The minute I stepped foot inside that roundhouse, I felt right at home. I knew I had found my niche. She's in a different frame of mind. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a happy thing. Everybody, everybody on it is happy and you're driving it and you're happy. It's just a great thing. Retta says as she is getting older, she keeps telling herself that she'll start working less days of the week, but she knows it's the train's magic that keeps her inner child alive. Like I said, this has been my favorite story of all time. <laughs> I personally love the San Antonio. Yeah. There's just, it's magical. It's something that's so unique to our city. And like she said, everyone on the train is a happy person. And she told me there's a rule. If you ever pass the train and there's people on the train and they're waving to you, mm -hmm. you have to wave have back to. because then it just puts you in a better mood. It's true. I, Retta, you are a gem. And if you ever see her, uh, tell her Sarah says hi and Sweet. make sure you wave to her and hear her laugh. She'll put, she'll make your day. That's a ksat.com. Ksat.com. All right. Time now, 822, 78 degrees out. There are several new movies in theater this weekend after the break. Our resident movie junkie, executive producer Joy. Oh my gosh, she was raving about this one. The Elvis movie. She's going to tell you if you should get your popcorn ready or if you should save your money. All right, Elvis Presley's life and career is rocking the big screen this weekend. Austin Butler stars in the biopic and actually sings wow. most of the songs in the film. It's rated PG-13. I did not know that. Yeah, that was a big thing. He's a very talented young man. Very impressive. All right, so our executive producer, Joy, Joy Presley, ironically. She is a third cousin. Whoa, wait, Joy, what was the relation again? Third cousin. Third cousin by marriage. Okay, so she does have a relation to the Elvis family. But her last name is Presley. So that's, that's true. Cool. All right, so she actually saw the movie. Uh, she actually saw it before she came into work overnight. So, like, good on you. <laughs> I value sleep. She says it was awesome and worth all the hype. She says it is full of surprises. Austin Butler is captivating as the king of rock and roll. It'll have you dancing in your seat. She gives it, get this, a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Yeah, she was raving about it. All right, on to another movie, The Black Phone. Oh. Also new in theaters. Right now, both movies are getting really good reviews so far. Elvis is certified fresh with oh. critics with 79%. That's actually really high. And 93% from fans. The Black Phone, though. Higher with critics. What's going on here? I don't know. What is the Black Phone movie? I don't know. I need I'm to not... watch it. It's a scary movie, oh, apparently. I don't watch scary movies. But that is also certified fresh with critics. 83% and 90% for fans. What's the line of demarcation for being certified fresh? Um, I like would 80 say 90. I would say like 79 to, to 80. Is okay. Pretty, it's pretty Basically, good. Basically, if you like pass a class, you're certified fresh. Yes. All right. We're certified fresh. I'm going to leave that alone. 827, <laughs> 78 degrees out. Heading our next half hour of GMSA, we're talking about options following the overturning of Roe v. Wade. What local organizations want you to know. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. And look at this. We have the big Pride Festival happening today. Jonathan Cotto standing by with all the details and a live report. What you can expect. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. Just about 8.32 this Saturday, June 25th. Thank you so much for starting your weekend, starting your Saturday with us. So right now, it is a, we'll call it a crisp 78 degrees, Sarah's five. And I want to say crisp because, what are we at, 20 days of triple digits already? Yeah, I mean, Oof. I guess technically we will be crispy this okay. afternoon, <laughs> like as in hot. Uh, but it's going to be that way all weekend long for us. However, there are some changes ahead. Let's take a look at your poolside forecast. Maybe you're going to want to chill out by the pool, cool down and that way. 90 degrees at noon, 101 for the afternoon high temperature, mostly sunny today. So that UV index is going to be extreme during the peak heating hours of the day, 2 to 7 p.m. 
use that sunblock when you can. If you're planning on visiting some of our lovely state parks around South Central Texas, Pack that water with you. It's going to be hot. Temperatures will be near 100 degrees at Devil's River, Enchanted Rock, Government Canyon, Guadalupe River, Hill Country State Natural Area, or even at Lost Maples. It should be close to 100 degrees. Now, this is the changes I was talking about. We are going to be seeing our rain chances go up. Widely scattered showers and storms are possible starting Monday through Thursday. Now, coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk more about these rain chances and how the tropics might affect that in just a few moments. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man facing charges after an overnight stabbing. This is what we know right now. It happened a little after 1130 last night. Uh, this is a home on Mariner Street. It's not too far from Old Pearsall Road on the southwest side of town. Police on the scene telling us a victim stabbed in the arm rushed to the hospital. The man who attacked him facing charges of aggravated assault. And check out this video right now. Unclear what exactly sparked this big fire on the city's northeast side. This was a scene yesterday evening on Broadway near Greenbrier, not too far from 410. At last check, no reports of any injuries, but we are going to have more on this throughout the day, so make sure to stay with us on air and online as that information becomes available. Well, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office asking for your help trying to identify this man. Now, his body was found on a mission road on the city's south side. If you have any information about who he could be, you are asked to call the medical examiner's office. That number on your screen, 210-335-4011, or you can email unidentified at bear.org. Well, this morning, it is still the biggest story in the country. The Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, a nearly 50-year-old precedent. The question now is, what can Texas expect following the Supreme Court's ruling? Right now, women who are six weeks pregnant can face a civil lawsuit if they obtain an abortion in Texas. And keep in mind, there is no exception for rape or incest. Now, with the court's ruling, those restrictions will become even more tight. In addition, the Supreme Court ruling activated a trigger law that will go into effect 30 days from the opinion, so 29 days from today. In 29 days, abortions will only be allowed in two events in Texas. If a patient's life is in danger or if they're at risk of substantial impairment of a major bodily function. And with the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, Texas is not the only state with abortion laws. Take a look at this map. More than half of all states, primarily in the South and Midwest, are expected to ban or severely restrict access to abortion, if not now, then in the coming weeks and coming months. And while one side of the issue is vowing to fight on, some on the other side are talking about options. People in San, in San Antonio, one organization specifically, they've worked for 15 years to end abortion. They say their goal is to provide alternatives for women. RJ Marquez has their message. I can tell you it's been a very emotional day. My whole morning has been spent ups and downs. Kathy Nix is the executive director of San Antonio Coalition for Life. She says since 2007, the pro-life group has been trying to let women know there are options other than abortion. So that abortion does not become her only choice um, because that is no choice at all. Nick said with Friday's Supreme Court decision, the coalition will move forward to bolster its pregnancy care centers that offer health screenings, STD tests, and more information. The funding for those centers, the, uh, the diapers and all of the, the formula and everything that a, a, a woman needs to help with her pregnancy is going to be the things that we're going to be focusing on. The group also informs women about natural family planning. They call fertility awareness based methods. These are uh, scientific tools that help women with their fertility, whether they are hoping to conceive or hoping to avoid pregnancy. The coalition also encourages women facing an unexpected pregnancy to connect with their centers. If she chooses to parent, to help helping with parenting and or if she chooses to place for adoption, help with that as well. So we're standing in the breach and we will continue to do so. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Well, today is Pride Day and the Pride Festival set for 11 this morning. Jonathan Cotto joining us live. So, Jonathan, how does it look out there right now? 
It is starting to pick up the stage. The main stage here is already playing some music. The volunteers are busy putting everything together. And uh, let me tell you, I have the Pride San Antonio's president here with me. That's going to talk to us a little more about what's taking place here. And more importantly, why? You know, Philip, we were having a conversation off camera. We were just talking about how far we as a community have come when it comes to celebrating pride here in San Antonio. We really have. And Jonathan, thank you. And good morning, San Antonio. Um, I'm really privileged to be serving as a president of Pride San Antonio. So what happened in the parking lot of some bars over here on Main Avenue, in which we had 10 booths and we had a 15 minute pride parade. We now have about 150 vendors. We have a kids section. We have so much history going on and we have so much celebration. Since 2019, we have not been able to celebrate here under the guidance of Metro Health to make sure that we're we're COVID protected. And so we're really excited to be celebrating this year. So we're looking to have a bigger and better than ever pride, as it says, pride bigger than Texas. And we really have grown to be that. And we want to make sure everybody understands this is a city event. There's only two events that are sanctioned by the city as First Amendments, Martin Luther King and Pride and that. And so we're very privileged that the city of San Antonio has, has worked with us to do this. Now, Philip, something that um, I learned that this is a collaborative effort with the city and also local law enforcement. Talk to me a little bit about the security measures that are in place to ensure that this event stays safe for, for everyone participating, because we know that this is a family friendly event. Exactly. We have about 40 Bear County Sheriff's deputies that serve as our security on site. We're working with F SAPD for the closure for the streets and the parade. And then they also have activated the fusion team just as an emergency standby in case there's anything that does happen. So we do have have emergency exits. We have first aid here. So we have everything planned out. We've been working very closely with the city of San Antonio and they've been a tremendous help. Philip, let's get into the good stuff. Talk to me about the entertainment, the music, the food. What can folks expect as they make their way out to Crockett Park this morning? We have about 40 different varieties of food that you can eat over here. So it's everything from empanadas from South America to jive turkey barbecue and that, and just any sort of regular food that you would see at Fiesta. And the entertainment, we have our headliners, Angel Bonilla. She was on The Voice. She was a finalist from there. She's also an international trans advocate for the, for the world because she's from the Philippines originally. We have Bibi Zahara Bonet, the number one first RuPaul's Drag Race queen, and yes. then Cindy Lee Fontaine. So we're very excited to be to be partnering with them to have the celebration of our event as we come back post COVID. Now we also have a parade in the works. Talk to me really quick about the running of the queens. The running of the queens. Traditionally at Fiesta Flambeau, if any of y'all have ever watched it, um, you see that there's some runners that kind of kick off the parade. Well, one of our, our founding members, Crystal Kelly, had said, why don't we do something to kick off our parade? So what we're going to do is we're going to have a running of the queens. They're going to have to wear certain high heel shoes and they're going to be um, running down here. Um, and so that's the kickoff of our parade at 830. So we... It, the crowd loves it. Um, we give very great giveaways. We have one of our, our biggest sponsors that have been with us since 2010, which is the Bonham Exchange. They give a Bonham Black card. So that, if anybody is from here in San Antonio, know that a Bonham Black card is really nice. We have some other um, gifts for them. There's about probably $1,000 worth of gifts for the winner of the, of the running of the Queens. Awesome, Philip. Well, thank you so much. I want a Bonham Black card. Let's see what I have to do to get one. Well, folks, pride bigger than the state of Texas happening here in San Antonio and uh, from 11 to 30, 730. So don't miss out. Back to you in the studio. All right, Jonathan Cotto, thank you so much. We're going to check in with you in just a bit. All right, our South Texas Pride series continues on KSAT.com. Just head to KSAT.com slash South Texas Pride. Look at all the amazing stories that our team has put together. And, of course, more stories on the way. Time now, 841, 78 degrees out. Still a lot to come. Today is Saturday. That means we have Texas Eats. Yes. Between Jonathan bringing up empanadas and we got steak on the TV. Mouth is watering this morning. David Elder giving us a preview of Texas Eats. Not going to want to miss it. And of course, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. 78 now. It's beautiful out there. We just saw Jonathan Cotto out and about at the festival. How hot will it get today? Could we see triple digits? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit.
Well, welcome back everyone. I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. Take a look outside right now. We have got plenty of sunshine, but we do have some puffy cumulus clouds out there. It is 78 degrees and it feels like 80. And the reason why it feels like that already is because that humidity is high. Dew points are at 70 degrees, but watch what happens. Later on this afternoon, we're going to see the humidity fall and we shouldn't have a heat index value during the peak heat of the day. So when we're at 100 degrees, it's going to feel like 100. Thank goodness it won't feel like 110 or greater than that. Outside right now, it's 78 degrees in San Antonio, as I just mentioned. Generally, temperatures are in the mid to upper 70s. This is going to be the coolest part of the day, folks. It's only going to get hotter from here. It's already 83 up in Dallas and Abilene. But look to the north and you can see some much cooler air. It's 55 degrees in Denver and in the 40s in Wyoming. And while we won't get into the 40s or even into the 50s or 60s, this cool front is going to increase our our rain chances and knock temperatures down to more seasonably average, which is the low 90s around this time of year. OK, take a look outside with the satellite and radar around this time. Uh, we deal with this heat high. This is the reason why we are hot, compressing the air kind of like uh, your air fryer at home <laughs> and uh, keeping things hotter for us uh, both today and tomorrow. Out in the tropics, though, we are monitoring this area of disorganized storms. It could become a tropical development, uh, tropical depression rather or tropical storm. It's got about a 60% chance of development a little too soon to know exactly where this potential system would go. But in the Gulf of Mexico, there is something that could have more of a direct impact to us around San Antonio. Some of these storms that are disorganized out in Florida, they could become organized a low chance for development, only 20%. Still, though, regardless of development, these showers and storms in uh, Florida have a lot of tropical moisture with them, and we're going to see it collect more moisture over the Gulf of Mexico. So at the time that that front reaches San Antonio, we're also going to have some more moisture in the air, tropical moisture in the air. That's why there is a decent chance for widely scattered showers and storms Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and even Thursday if that tropical moisture sticks around a bit longer. Chance for rain is not great, only 30 to 40 percent, but it is the best chance for rain we have had in a while uh, because it has been such a dry and hot June. So again, widely scattered. Not everybody is going to see rain or healthy rains at that, but there is that chance Monday through Thursday for some widely scattered showers and storms. We got to get through this weekend though, and today is going to be hot. Here's your case at 12 hour forecast by noon. We'll be at 90 degrees. We're expecting to see temperatures in the mid to upper 90s through most of the afternoon, topping off at 101 in San Antonio, 5, 6 p.m. Southeast winds today, 5 to 15 miles per hour. An occasional gust up to 20 miles per hour is going to be possible. So if you find the shade, at least we'll have that breeze and again, no heat index during the peak heat of the day. It'll be 101 in New Braunfels, 101 in Gonzales, 103 in Carrizo Springs, and 104 out west toward Del Rio. And up in the hill country, temperatures just a couple of degrees cooler, 98 degrees in Kerrville. Once again, tomorrow, 101 degrees, an off chance for a stray afternoon shower. And then our rain chances increase Monday through Thursday of this upcoming week. Widely scattered showers and storms possible. Look at those highs. We go from a triple digit streak to highs only in the low 90s, even struggling to get out of the 80s on Tuesday. That's a much better looking forecast, Max. Plus, we get some rain on the screen. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And a lot of people are going to be out and about this weekend, perhaps floating on the Comal Ooh. or Guadalupe. So I've got to look at your floating forecast coming up soon. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Time now, 848, 78 degrees out. Well, we know winemaking is a big business here in Texas, especially the Texas Hill Country. But are they dealing with too much drought? We're going to explain RJ Marquez giving us an inside look. And before we head to break, a quick live look out there at the roadways. Everything calm and quiet now. Not too many people out and about, but if anything does pop up, we will keep you posted. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. So the Hill Country produces, get this, the second largest amount of wine grapes across the state of Texas. But as we've been talking about drought conditions, Gillespie County under the most intense level of drought. RJ Marquez visited two Fredericksburg wineries and they're feeling the heat. 
It's no secret that Texas is hot. It's another hot day in the hill country, and these wineries are adapting to this early summer heat wave. So you can trellis them over. Brian McConey, general manager at Augusta Vin, says they are countering the heat by leaving more leaves and stem on the vines. We're making sure that our grape clusters are shaded, that they're, that none are really uh, directly exposed to sunlight. We're relying a little bit more on reflective lights. But another issue is the drought and getting these vines enough water. When you restrict that water early on, you naturally end up with more concentrated wine because the berries end up being smaller. There are 60 acres planted here at Augusta Vineyards and for the most part, these leaves right here are doing a good job of protecting grapes on the vines, but the vines are pulling water from the ground, which means that if we were to hit any sort of water restrictions, that would absolutely change this vineyard situation. We would have to pull back significantly from the growth that you're seeing out here. Slate Theory opened months ago. Co-owner Chase Jones said his younger vines are most vulnerable during extreme weather and severe drought. They're my babies, man. Yeah. 180,000 babies. I'm having to try to push a bunch of water, push some nitrogen out to try to get the growth. In an effort to beat the heat, Slate Theory built a 10,000 square foot underground wine cellar, the first in Texas. Keep it 61 degrees or so to keep it nice and neutral down there for the for the wine. Jones and Manconi say time will tell how this will affect overall taste and prices. Might see an increase in price because of what we've had to put out and all the energy we've had to put into this vineyard just because of the drought. Look for more concentration in 2022 for those that are able to keep that water on. In Fredericksburg, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. And of course, you can watch the full story, see all the details right now at KSAT.com. 854, 78 degrees out. So they're calling him the world's ugliest dog. You might not think so. After the break, we're going to let you decide. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. We want to introduce you to Mr. Happy Face. Let's see if we can get a close up here. Okay, there we go. He was just named the world's ugliest dog. So the contest returned to California after a two year hiatus because of the pandemic. He came all the way from Arizona and blew away the judges with his crooked head, gray mohawk, hairless, pimple ridden body, awkward hobble and snort like breathing. Wait, so where's the a picture think, of him? I think that's him. That little guy, the one that they were holding? I don't know. It was the little one that they were, oh, okay. Oh, okay, because I thought it was the first one. <laughs> there oh, he is. there he is. Okay, so yeah. here's the deal. Oh, I don't think there's here. anything as such as an ugly dog. Oh, good spin. I like that. Yeah, it's my, that's my your story positive your, spin on everything. I usually ride it. the line right down the middle. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like. There he is. Oh. <laughs> every dog's beautiful takes close up. All right, maybe not every dog. That was a natural reaction. You're just like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, um, you know what? I think it was an award he wanted to win because they came all the way from Arizona to the festival in California and uh, tried really hard. To the victor then, go the spoils. I wonder what the uh, world's ugliest dog wins. Ooh, afterwards. we'll do some research. Maybe a perm or something like that. Oh, no. Time now, 858, 78 degrees out. We got a lot more to come on GMSA. How secure are your passwords? We're going to share some simple tips to keep in mind to protect yourself and your family. We'll be right back. In the aftermath of the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, what does that mean for Texas? What are trigger laws and what comes next? We're going to explain. And back here at home in the Alamo City, it's a cool start. We're starting off just under 80 degrees, but will we see triple digit heat again? We're checking with Sarah Spivey, who is right to my left in just a few moments. Hello. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is about 9.01 this Saturday, June 25th. And like we've been saying, June has really felt like August recently. Oh my gosh, yes. And it's been the hottest June on record so far. You know, we usually see a high temperature right around 93 this time of year. We're once again going to be at 100 today, potentially our 21st 100 degree day so far this year. We're starting off right at 80. Winds are from the south southwest at about 15 miles per hour. It does feel like it's 83 degrees because of high humidity. If you're planning on heading out to the Comala Guadalupe Rivers, here's your floating forecast. 0% chance for rain today. High temperature of 101. The UV index is going to be extreme skin damage time in less than 10 minutes. Wherever you're out and about today, remember the sunscreen. Remember to stay hydrated because look at these high temperatures everywhere. 101 in Hondo, 102 in Uvalde, 104 in Del Rio. It's never a good thing. When my dress 
matches the color of the map here <laughs> means we're going to be hot. Now this weekend 101 today and 101 tomorrow. Slight difference tomorrow is that in the afternoon there could be a stray shower, but only a measly 10% chance. Much better rain chances though in the week ahead. Finally, a weather pattern change for us. Can't guarantee rain, but we can guarantee the chance for rain and temperatures down quite a bit. So we'll be talking about that coming up in a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. We begin this hour with some breaking news. The new gun measure bill has been signed and it is now law. President Joe Biden signing the bill this morning and shortly after the signing this new legislation. Well, the president addressed the media and recounted his meeting after meeting with family after family whose loved ones were killed by gun violence. Now, this new law toughens background checks for the youngest gun buyers. It keeps firearms from domestic violence offenders and help states enforce existing red flag laws. Now, the president says it was the families of the victims who pushed this bill through with the constant message of do something. Well, today we did. While this bill doesn't do everything I want, it does include actions I've long called for that are going to save lives. Now, as you just heard, things that he wanted more. So the new legislation did have bipartisan support, but it did not include everything that he had hoped for. That included lawmakers not raising the age requirement to buy assault style weapons. Well, back here at home, new this morning, a man and his four year old son in critical condition after a home invasion on northeast side ends in gunfire. Police say this all happened just before 1.30 this morning. This is the 4800 block of Raybon Drive. Investigators on the scene telling us a father and son were in the living room. Someone entered the home, shot both the man and the child. Police say that man shot in the head, the child shot in the nose. Both rushed University Hospital in critical condition. Right now, police are investigating, trying to figure out what exactly happened, why it happened, and who is responsible. And another shooting, this one on the northwest side, sending a 55-year-old man to the hospital, also in critical condition. This is happening in the 8900 block of Data Point near Wurzbach, just before 2.30 this morning, and it was in the parking lot of this easy wash laundromat. Officers say at least 28 shell casings found in the parking lot of the laundromat. Right now, investigators still working, figuring out who pulled the trigger. There are a few people being questioned this time, but right now, no one in custody. Well, the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, creating both concern and celebration. Now, one group very interested in how the court's decision will play out in the long term. That group is doctors. Now, these doctors specialize in women's health, and they're making their voices heard. These dangers will fall disproportionately on black women who are already more likely to die in Texas during childbirth than white women. And for Hispanic women, the maternal mortality rate doubled between 2018 and 2020. An institute that researches reproductive health says that one in four women receive abortion care. Now, the research shows a majority of those women earn less than $25,760 a year and they're in their 20s. Research also shows 59% of women who get an abortion have at least one child. Abortions happen among women who say they're religious. 24% identify as Catholic. On the other side of the issue, we have those who've been waiting years for this reversal to happen. The San Antonio Coalition for Life says they've worked for at least 15 years to end abortion. Now, Kathy Nix is the executive director for the pro-life group who now says the plan is to help equip what she calls pregnancy care centers. Now, those centers offer health screenings, STD tests, and more information. The funding for those centers, the uh, the diapers and all of the, the formula and everything that a, a, a woman needs to help with her pregnancy is going to be the things that we're going to be focusing on. Nick says their goal is to also provide information and access to alternatives for women like adoption. So a lot of the talk in the aftermath of the decision are trigger laws. It's been about a month since we first heard about that leaked draft of Justice Alito's Supreme Court opinion. And since then, there's been a lot of focus on these trigger laws. Texas has won a trigger law related to abortion, as does many other states. There's essentially a plan in place for the very moment in anticipation for a change of federal law. Our Meyer Arthur breaks down what the term means and what it means for women here in Texas. 
Think of a trigger law as a just-in-case strategy. It's a way for states to automatically change their laws based on what happens at the federal level. A trigger law actually is a law that's passed by a legislature that goes into effect if or when the Supreme Court or the federal government changes a law. So in this case, in Texas, it means now that the Supreme Court has overturned Roe versus Wade. Then 30 days after that ruling, um, automatic uh, law goes into place saying that all abortions are banned in the state of Texas. This abortion trigger law has been on the book since last summer after Governor Greg Abbott signed House Bill 1280. It came out of the same legislature that passed SB 8, the controversial law banning Texas abortions after six weeks. 13 states have trigger laws related to abortion, and most of those, like Texas, have their own abortion restrictions in place. Legislators, particularly in those red states that have been trying to oppose abortion, have, have knowingly put these past these things with the intent, of, or really a hope as much as anything else, or a wish that the Supreme Court would shift toward a more conservative view. And so they, they bid their time, basically. This is not the first trigger law in Texas. Lawmakers passed one related to the Affordable Care Act, hoping the Supreme Court would strike down President Obama's plan. There was even a trigger law related to the national speed limit in the early 1990s. Texas had a law in the books that said once the national mandatory speed limit is repealed, it literally triggered overnight uh, the lifting of the speed limits and sending the state transportation department out to actually change the sign. Change now will be nationwide with the end of constitutionally protected abortion rights as each state is left to decide what it will do next. Here in Texas, a trigger law awaits. Myra Arthur, KSAT 12 News. Well, happening today, San Antonio continues to celebrate Pride Month with the Pride Festival. Things are getting started over at Crockett Park downtown. That's where our Jonathan Cotto has been throughout the morning. So, Jonathan, what can people expect today? People can expect a lot of fun, Max, a lot of food, a lot of live entertainment, drag queens, and live performers like Jaime E., who is standing right here next to me, who happens to be Mr. San Antonio Pride 2022. Jaime, thank you so much for being with us today. Absolutely. Thank you so much uh, for inviting me at this opportunity to speak with you. Now, talk to me a little bit about being uh, this year's Mr. San Antonio Pride. So my first performance that I gave on this Bud Light stage over here was in 2012 for Pride 2012. And so now it's 2022. And so uh, with my live acts and my contributions towards the community, I was given the, uh, the title of being the ambassador for Mr. San Antonio Pride 2022. Hi, man. Super cool. And congratulations for that title. Now, Thanks I know so you are a vocalist and you're yeah. going to be performing here uh, this this afternoon. But first, let's talk about the conversation we were having, you know, years ago. You've been here early on uh, in these Pride events and you were telling me that you just seen how far it's come and how far how much it's grown. Yes. Oh, absolutely. I remember when the parade used to just be 15 minutes long and now it's it's about two hours. And I remember when it was only just one block of this park and now we're occupying, you know, two blocks and then some of the area in the strip. So it's it's definitely been a journey seeing how small everything was many, many years ago. And now it's grown and there's so many charities, there's so many um, organizations that are involved. And so we just want to uh, contribute towards the common good. Jaime, thank you so much again for being with us. It's such a pleasure getting to know you and speaking with you and learning more about the contributions that you've made for Pride here in our community. So thank you, folks. If you're interested in coming out to Pride here at Crockett Park, Jaime's going to be performing. He's going to be singing a number of songs uh, close to 5, 545 this afternoon, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Awesome, folks. Well, that, there you have it. Back to you in the studio. All right, Jonathan Cotto, thank you so much. 9-11, 79 degrees out. All right, Harry Styles and Gucci teaming up so if you're fans of either you want to listen up we're gonna the full story new clothing line we're gonna explain and back to the future star michael j fox getting a big honor we're gonna explain in just a bit but first taking a live look out of the alamo city 79 now could we see triple digit day number 21 we're gonna check in with sarah spivey in just a bit 
Well, welcome back everyone. It's safe to say we could use some rain and it has been a very dry start to the year. Here's a look at the records go back to 1885, the driest starts to the year up to about June 25th. This year clocks in at number three, the third driest start to the year we've ever had on record very impressively dry. Unfortunately, that has resulted in extreme and exceptional drought. And here in San Antonio, we have finally got a rain chance to talk about. So that's some good news there. We are going to be seeing our rain chances go up early this week, all the way through about Thursday. Unfortunately, only a 30 to 40% chance that's widely scattered showers and storms, but the chance is still there for some rain. It's not going to help us out in very many ways with the drought conditions, but at least it's going to hopefully provide some relief for, for some backyards. We do have to get through today and tomorrow though, so let's talk talk about today. 80 degrees outside right now. It feels like 83 because of the high humidity. Dew points are near 70 degrees and winds from the southwest at about 15 miles per hour. But here's the thing, that humidity will go down a little bit in the afternoon, so at least we won't have to deal with a, a major heat index this afternoon. It's 80 in San Antonio, 82 in New Braunfels, 81 in Pleasanton, 78 in Hondo, 76 in Kerrville, 78 in Uvalde, and 82 in Cachula. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast calls for a quick warm up today. We are going to see plenty of sunshine 90 at noon and then into the afternoon temperatures will be climbing into the mid 90s and upper 90s by 4 or 5 p.m. That's when we'll be at 100 degrees 101 for the high temperature and even past sunset tonight. It's still going to be in the 90s by 9 we will be at 94 degrees winds today from the south at about 5 to 15 miles per hour and occasional gust up to 20 miles per hour neighborhood high temperatures. It'll be 97 and Bulverde, 97 in Bernie, 102 in Yavaldi, 102 in Poteet, 101 in Seguin, and 101 in New Braunfels. Our average high this time of year is 93, so we're going to be uh, about 8 degrees hotter than that. All because of this pesky heat high, compressing the air, keeping it hot. But notice, up to the north, you can see there's some rain and even some thunderstorms out near Chicago right now ahead of this front. This is a front that's going to be moving through Monday. It is going to be bringing us a chance for rain. No, it's not going to drop our temperatures into the 40s and 50s, but it is going to allow us to be closer to that seasonable average of 93. Tomorrow, however, still under the impression of that heat high 101 degrees. Then on Monday, that front approaches and at the same time we get some tropical moisture in from the Gulf of Mexico. And so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and even Thursday, if this tropical moisture sticks around that long, we have the chance for some widely scattered showers and storms. The chance is there. It's a 30 to 40% chance, but hey, we'll take it because look at what it does to temperatures too. It knocks our temperatures down into the mid to low to mid 90s, even struggling to get out of the 80s on Tuesday. Please continue to check back in with us as we refine that forecast. We could talk more about rainfall totals the closer we get to uh, Tuesday. So continue to check back in with us. Max, coming up, I'll have the pollen count. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 918, 80 degrees out. Well, Michael J. Fox slated to receive a big award, not only for just his body of work, but for how he has helped the community. We're going to explain in just a bit. And Independence Day, 4th of July, just around the corner. If you haven't heard, fireworks stores are open. We're going to explain what you need to know, how to be safe and not break the law. All right, so take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, two, three, two, fireball four, daily four, Five seven zero four fireball six. Your cash five three five six eight twenty nine. Here we go. Mega millions one seven eleven twenty five fifty six. Big number fourteen. Mega player two. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. Well, fireworks sales are officially started ahead of the upcoming Fourth of July holiday. Bear County's burn ban does not affect the use of fireworks. However. Some high aerial fireworks are banned. That includes skyrockets with sticks or missiles with fins. Now, fireworks sellers say those will not even be available this year. Remember, it is illegal to burn fireworks inside of city limits. And of course, if you do use fireworks elsewhere outside of city limits, be safe, be smart. Clean up after yourselves. 922, 80 degrees out. We got a lot more to come. Ooh, up next, where you're going to tell 
You can dress, oh, okay, we're gonna tell you where you can dress like Harry Styles. I promise it's gonna be very expensive though. We're gonna explain. Good morning and welcome back. Michael J. Fox being selected to receive an honorary Oscar award, the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences, giving him the Gene Herschel Humanitarian Award set for November 19th. Now he's earned this award both for his work as an actor and as the founder of the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research. Remember, the actor rose to fame in the 1980s. He starred as the young capitalist Alex Keaton on the TV show Family Ties. I know him personally as Marty McFly from the Back to the Future franchise. All right, so from the 80s to the now, Harry Styles taking his style to a whole nother level, teaming up with Gucci for a new clothing campaign. So the line is called Ha Ha Ha, a tribute to the singer's relationship with the Gucci creative director, Alessandro Michel. Now, Styles already has an established past with Gucci, appeared in a Gucci campaign in 2018, wore an outfit created by Michelle to the 2019 Met Gala. Now, the collection is set to launch in October, and that hopefully is it for your fashion news this morning. Just about 927, 81 degrees out. We have a lot to come here on GMSA. A lot happened overnight, including a cutting downtown and a couple shootings. We're going to have the latest in the next half hour. Good morning and welcome back. Happy Saturday, happy weekend. It is 9.30 this morning. It is June 25th. And Sarah Spivey is 81 degrees out there, so if people have things to do, Aaron Saran, gotta do it now. Now's the time, unless that errand is sitting by the pool, because then that'll be really nice this afternoon for you as temperatures reach 101 degrees. I want to talk for a moment here about the pollen count that we got in. Good news is molds are the only allergen present. They are low. Saharan dust is not going to be an issue this weekend. If you're planning on being out and about, perhaps at one of our state parks, temperatures should be close to 100 degrees. Whether you're going uh, to Enchanted Rock or up to Gua Guadalupe River or Hill Country State Natural Area, it's all going to be hot out there today. Now, our rain chances do go up in the week ahead. This is some good news. We really haven't been able to show this good of rain chances in a while. And yeah, they're not great. It's not a slam dunk as far as rain goes, but we will have widely scattered showers and storms in the week ahead. That'll help to make temperatures go lower. Coming up, we're going to talk about how low those forecast highs will go, and we'll take a quick check of the tropics, which should at least give us a little bit of moisture in the week ahead. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, man facing charges after an overnight stabbing. Oh, this is what we know right now. It happened a little after 1130 at a home on Mariner Street, not too far from Old Pearsall Road. This is the southwest side of town. Police out there telling us that the victim was stabbed in the arm, rushed to the hospital. The man who attacked him now facing charges of aggravated assault. Well, in the aftermath of the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, almost 50 years of precedent, we saw protests around the country and around Texas yesterday. We expect more protests today. So following that decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. Now, reaction was swift and passionate, a lot of emotion on both sides. ABC's Christine Sloan reports from New York. Across the country, excitement and anger after the Supreme Court's big decision overturning Roe versus Wade from professional athletes. Pro-choice allows other people to be pro-life if that is what works for them. Pro-life doesn't allow anybody to make a choice. To state leaders. That makes this Supreme Court decision the, the most life-saving decision in the history of our nation. Massive crowds swarming the streets of New York City, Boston, and beyond. President Biden condemned the decision. With Roe gone, let's be very clear. The health and life of women in this nation are now at risk. Inside the Capitol, opposing views from Democratic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy. It's a slap in the face to women about using their own judgment to make their own decisions about their reproductive freedom. Americans celebrate this historic victory because we know it will save the lives of millions of children. The 6-3 decision from the court's conservative majority upheld Mississippi's abortion ban after 15 weeks. Five of those justices going even farther, voting to overturn Roe v. Wade itself. 
the court's liberal wing drafting a sharp dissent. Justice Stephen Breyer asserting Alito's ruling cleared the court due to three justices appointed by former President Donald Trump, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett, whose decisive votes overturned Roe. Thirteen states have trigger laws ending abortion access now that Roe is overruled. Thirteen more states are now expected to move quickly to ban abortion. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Well, the month of June is Pride Month, and today is Pride Day. We know we have a big festival set to start around 11 a.m. Jonathan Cotto has been at where it is set to start. So, Jonathan, how does it look out there now? Max, that's right. I've been here all morning watching the setup, watching thousands of volunteers putting everything together, all the details for this year's Pride event. And I have to tell you, I am standing in the middle of a wrestling wrestling ring here with Iggy, who is a part of uh, Pride Championship Wrestling here. Iggy, thank you so much for speaking with us today. No problem. Pride Championship Wrestling has been around for 10 years, thanks to the great support of Pride San Antonio, who's running this event. And we cannot be more blessed than to be able to be here and celebrate LGBTQ wrestlers and pride. It's gonna be a good time. Now, what time are the performances gonna be starting here? Wrestling's gonna start roughly around three o'clock today. I have to be on the main stage at two, but hey, Better late than never. We're running on drag time. <laughs> no, Iggy, I have to tell you, I've, always, I've been a huge fan of wrestling for, for many, many years since I was a kid. And one of, uh, I've always wanted to do something that I've never had a chance to, and that's go from one end. This thing y'all do where you go from one end of the ring to the other. Can you show me how that's done? Sure, no problem. All right. Here we have a demonstration, folks. This is just... Uh, one of the many things that's going to be taking place here at this year's Pride event. So I'm, I'm letting you know it's going to be a good time. Iggy's going to show us a little of these wrestling moves and what they look like. You want to grab the rope. The reason why, you got to protect yourself. You got to protect yourself and grab the rope because you don't know. You notice lately a lot of things have happened. Things have popped. So whoop, you grab onto the rope, you have something to hold on to to keep your control. So you're going to lead off. When you lead off, you're going to keep a straight line. And then you just start going. All right. It's all mind over matter. There it is. There it is. There it is. Iggy, I'm going to give it a shot. All Max, right. uh, let's see if I don't uh, break my back, but I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah? All right. All right. All right. Here we go, folks. <laughs> Vamanos. <laughs> that was way too much fun. Iggy, how did I do? <laughs> How, how honest do you want me to be? Listen, you don't have to say anything more. <laughs> Thank you so much. No Folks, there you have it. We're going to have a good time here at Pride uh, 22 at Crockett Park. Back to you in the studio. All right, John of the Cotto. Thank you so much. Medical headlines this morning. New data from the CDC seems to answer the question, how much does a second booster shot protect against COVID? Well, the CDC says, according to the most recent data, People 50 years old and older who have received two booster shots are more than 40 times less likely to die from COVID than those who are unvaccinated. And on top of that, they're also four times less likely to die than people who have only had one booster, though the death rate is low for both groups. Well, some disturbing numbers around 3,500 babies die in sleep related incidents each year in the United States. Many of those deaths can actually be prevented. The American Academy of Pediatrics putting out updated guidelines to help babies sleep more safe. CNN's Mandy Gaither has a look at these recommendations. For the first time in six years, the American Academy of Pediatrics has updated its safe sleep guidelines for babies. There are lots of factors that play into the dangers. The AAP says co-sleeping under any circumstances is not safe for infant sleep, whether it's on the couch or a bed. We recognize sometimes you may unintentionally fall asleep with the baby. So I recommend that, that parents create kind of a safe sleep zone in the bed when they do this feeding to move away the pillows, the loose bedding, things that, that could create that added risk. Parents can also set alarms to help remind them to take their child back to the crib. The AAP says babies should sleep in the same room with their parents for at least six months separately on a firm, flat surface covered in a snug fitted sheet with no added bedding or bumpers. 
You want to avoid anything that's soft, plush, or loose. Babies start to move around. We don't want things getting up over their heads. We don't want overheating. We don't want things to obstruct the nose and mouth that increase the risk of suffocation. The AAP also warns against the use of commercial devices that claim to reduce the risk of SIDS or other sleep-related issues, including wearable monitors. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Time now, 939, 81 degrees out. All right, today is Saturday. That means we have Texas Eats straight ahead. Oh my goodness, breakfast at Champions on the plate. Look at that, we got Wagyu beef. Oh my goodness, you're not gonna wanna miss it. And after the break, how secure is your password? What you need to know to protect yourself and your family. But first, a quick live look out at the Alamo City. 81 degrees out there right now. We saw Jonathan Cotto out and about. It is a gorgeous start to your Saturday morning. What is the rest of the day? What about the week? What does it look like? Will we see rain and when? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. So some scary news. According to data compiled by the University of Maryland, there's a hacking attack on computers with internet every 39 seconds. Now these attacks, they affect one in three Americans each year. One of the biggest ways hackers break into the accounts, unsecure passwords. Yes. I know. RJ Marquez shows us how to make your passwords stronger and safer. Do any of these passwords look familiar? It turns out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is the most common online password followed by these, but if you have one of them, you're putting yourself at risk. Recent research reveals any passwords with six characters, regardless of whether numbers and symbols are included, can be cracked instantly. The same goes for seven or eight character passwords made up of just lowercase letters. On the flip side, a password using 18 symbols, numbers, and characters will take 438 trillion years to crack. To stay safe, experts say complicated passwords with unique letter-number combinations are best. For example, an 11-character password made up of numbers, upper and lowercase letters, and symbols would take about 34 years to crack. Also, using a multi-factor authentication can protect your accounts. This method requires you to enter a second login code, often from an app on your phone. Also, don't use the same password across multiple websites. Your Facebook password should not be the same as your online banking one. And set up a password manager to create and store your passwords. The most commonly hacked passwords include pet names or terms of endearment. Colors, animals, and swear words are also commonly hacked. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Okay, right, so Max, I, don't use swear words. I was, <laughs> was going to say, I know we joke about it, but it was a jarring stat that 123456 was one of the most popular passwords. So if that is your password, please change it. It's not mine, so you don't okay. have to worry about that. Okay, good. Um, hey, so we are going to be hot today. You said it earlier for the 21st day. Uh, this year it is going to be 100 degrees, so it is going to be hot today, hot tomorrow, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, not as hot. So that's some good news there outside right now. It is 80 degrees, feels like 83 because of high humidity. But watch what happens to the humidity today. We do see it take a tumble in the afternoon. Dew points will be in the 50s, which is pleasant. Now it'll be hot outside, but at least it won't be oppressively humid out there. We won't have to deal with the heat index value of like 110 or something like that. Instead, just a hot day for us outside right now. Temperatures are already warm. It's 82 in New Braunfels, 84 in Gonzales, 84 in Pleasanton, 78 in Hondo, 80 in Del Rio. Across the state of Texas, generally starting to get into the 80s, but look to the north. You can see some much cooler air. It's 49 in Casper, Wyoming, 53 in Denver. We've got this cool front that's actually going to impact our weather. It's going to bring our high temperatures back closer to normal or average this time of year, which is about 93 uh, degrees along this front. We have got uh, some rainfall, even some storms across areas in the Midwest, and that's going to be the biggest impact for us. That front is going to disrupt this heat high and allow for us to see the chance for rain. Let's take a quick check of the tropics because there's a couple of things I want to talk about. First of all, out in the Atlantic, there is an area of disorganized storms that has a 60% chance of development in the next five days. But potentially more impactful to us is this area of disorganized storms out in Florida that only has a 20% chance of developing into a tropical depression. So that's a low chance for development, but either way, this is going to impact us because it's going to bring some tropical moisture 
to South Central Texas across the Gulf of Mexico. That's going to combine with that slow moving front Monday and what's going to bring us at least the chance for scattered, widely scattered showers and storms Monday, Tuesday and potentially Wednesday and Thursday, depending on how long that tropical moisture sticks around. So when we look at the odds of rainfall, it's not great. 30 to 40 percent uh, widely scattered showers and storms, but we have the chance every every single day minus Friday uh, for uh, some rain in South Central Texas. That's going to knock our temperatures down too. But today it's just going to be hot and tomorrow too. High temperature of 101 in your KSAT 12 hour forecast will already be at 90 degrees by noon and in the afternoon. That's when temperatures are really going to crank up 101 5 6 PM. Winds today will be from the southeast at 5 to 15 miles per hour. We'll occasionally have a wind gust of up to 20 miles per hour, so a bit of a breeze out there today. Elsewhere it'll be 102 in Pleasanton, 103 degrees of Springs, 104 in Del Rio, 101 in Gonzales, 101 in New Braunfels. Wow, staying below 100 in Kerrville, but still 98 degrees up in the hill country. Look at what that potential rain does for our uh, high temperatures. Knocks us down to closer to seasonably average and <clears throat> On Tuesday, we could struggle to get out of the 80s too. So it's a little too soon to talk specifics about rainfall totals because again, the rain is going to be widely scattered. So keep on checking in with us in the forecast. We're going to have updates for you on air online on the KSAT Weather Authority app. Max, I'll have a final look at that pollen count coming up. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah Spivey. 948, 82 degrees out. A lot more to come on GMSA. Quick live look out at the roadways. Not too much traffic yet this morning. So like we've been saying, if you have stuff to do, get out and about early, try to beat the heat. If anything does pop up in your traffic, we will keep you posted. And of course, ooh, piece of steak to start the morning. Breakfast of Champions, David Elder, giving us a sneak peek at today's episode of Texas Eats, featuring a new Braunfels Mexican restaurant. That's when we come back. But first, look at those lotto numbers. Two, three, two, fireball four, five, seven, zero, four, fireball six. Your cash five, three, five, six, eight, twenty nine. And here we go. Mega millions one, seven, eleven, twenty five, fifty six. Big number 14, Mega Pyre two. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. It is still the biggest country across the biggest story across the country this morning. The Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, a nearly 50 year precedent. Now, the question is here at home, what can Texas expect after this ruling? Right now, women who are six weeks pregnant can face a civil lawsuit if they obtain an abortion in the Lone Star State. Keep in mind, there is no exception for rape or incest. And with the court's ruling, those restrictions will become even tighter. In addition, the Supreme Court ruling activated a trigger law. It's something we've been talking about for about a month now. Uh, that trigger law will go into effect in 29 days, technically 30 days after the day of the opinion, which was yesterday. So in 29 days from today, abortions would only be allowed in two events in Texas. If a patient's life is in danger or if they're at risk of substantial impairment of a major bodily function. Now, we have a lot more on this. We know a lot of people, a lot of questions. Head to KSAC.com. So has violent crime seemed like it's been on the rise here in the Alamo City? It seems like almost every morning there are worse and worse shootings to tell you about. Last weekend, we heard from the police chief, William McManus, at the scene of what started as a family barbecue and ended with seven people shot. Now, Chief McManus is set to join us on Leading SA tomorrow at 8 a.m. We're set to talk about local crime, the reasons behind it all, and what's being done. So if you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. for our full conversation. Well, it is Saturday, and that means we have Texas Eats. David Elder taking us to New Braunfels, sampling some Wagyu beef fa fajitas. Whoa, we're getting fancy today. Here's a preview.
But this one right here, the fajitas, I mean, these aren't your standard fajitas, right? No, not at all. Let me tell you a little bit. It's a Wagyu steak with some Gulf Mexican shrimp and our beautiful compound butter. That steak, I guarantee, is going to melt in your mouth. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, if you don't want steak, you also have another option right here, right? Yeah, so in case people want something a little bit lighter, we offer a vegetarian option, which comes with uh, carrots, grilled zucchini, squash, and some portobello mushrooms. I'm going to get this piece right here. It's calling my name. I'm going to dip it in some of this compound butter. Oh, Cheers. Yes, sir. Cheers. All right, the Wagyu beef fajitas, that's the vibe. <laughs> Delicious. Oh my goodness. The Wagyu beef fajitas are so tender. You dip it in that compound butter, you get some of the shrimp on there as well that you can add on. Plus, if you want to go full veggie, you can do that as well. Super delicious, lots of flavor. You have some of those fresh homemade tortillas as well that you can make a little taco out of. It is so good. This is a treat. Yes, sir. This has to be one of the most popular items on the menu. One of our best sellers by far. Oh my goodness. Texas Seats, 10 a.m. I wish you left us some samples. 9.55, 83 degrees out. We'll be right back. Hey folks, I'm Jonathan Cotto hanging out here at Crockett Park where in just a couple of hours, San Antonio's Pride 2022 events are going to be kicking off and there's going to be a number of vendors, live music, live entertainment, drag queens, and plenty of food here in this year's Pride celebrations. Not to mention that this is going to be a family-friendly event where you can also bring your pets. Again, this event's going to be taking place from 11 to 7.30 p.m. A parade is going to kick off with the battle or run of the queens at 8.30 with that parade starting at 9, so make sure you get your tickets and you don't miss out. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. One last look at the pollen count before we go. Only molds out there and they are low. That is some good news. We're going to be at 101 both today and tomorrow, so your weekend is going to be hot and dry. But here's the good news. We do expect isolated to widely scattered showers and storms Monday through Thursday. That'll knock our temperatures down quite a bit. Okay, so I know that we had the hottest May in record, right? Mm -hmm. And so now are we on pace for hottest June in record? It's likely. Oof. It's likely. So, yeah, it's been a brutal, brutal start to summer, and we're going to continue to see it be hot even beyond, you know, this week. We've still got July, and <laughs> we've got August to get through. We've already had 20 100-degree days. Today's likely going to be 21. So we are welcoming the rain in the week ahead. Not everybody's going to get rain, but the chance is there. Now, I know we only have 15 seconds, then Texas seats, shameless plug. How important is this rain and how much impact will it give us? Any rain is important, but unfortunately, this is not going to take away the drought for us by any means. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Texas. Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling around the Lone Star State looking for great restaurants you won't want to miss. Get ready for the iconic San Antonio Bakery to learn about Pan de Muerto. We had everything except customers when we first opened. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, get ready to place your orders. We're sharing some top spots to get tamales in the Alamo City. You started making all these tamales with only five pounds of masa, right? Yes. And we're off to the city of Hutto to try some famous pies and Southern cuisine. Our first stop on today's adventure is at a new French American restaurant just north of San Antonio. Now we're here on the northwest side of San Antonio to check out a new French restaurant with a Texas twist. Let's go inside TARDIS. Joining me now is executive chef and owner Jean Tardif. Thank you so much for having us out here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to your show. This Thank food you. looks incredible. You're from Mexico. Yes. You grew up there, but yes. you have like a French Mexican heritage. Talk to me a little bit about that experience. Exactly. Uh, I was born in Mexico. My father is French. My mother is Mexican. So I was born in Mexico and raised in Mexico until I had 12 years and then went to boarding school in France <laughs> and then came back to Mexico and that's lived my life back and forward, back and forward until I 
I study in France uh, French cuisine at the Cordon Bleu. And right in front of us, though, you actually have some very traditional dishes, right? But your own yes. little take on it. Uh, yes, we have traditional uh, 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 dishes like the, the beef Wellington. Yep. We have the dog magre. Uh, but here at the, with the carpaccio, I'm having my uh, Mexican culture, culture and family because the carpaccio is something that in Mexico we eat it a lot. It's like a ceviche, it's fresh. And we, obviously we have the lobster with some French vinaigrette. So this is a, a traditional rest, French restaurant, but we put like some Texas twist on it in some of the dishes. I want to try here. I'm going to start with the Wellington. Okay, let's do it. And I mean, this, the presentation alone is just over the top. I love the accents there on the puff pastry. Oh. <laughs> Is it? We have it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is a great presentation. How about it? Oh, wow. <laughs> Chef, that is one of the best bites I've had the entire year. Thank you. Thank you very much. This beef wellington is one of my favorite bites I've had the entire year. The puff pastry on the outside has just a nice crunchy texture. On the inside, the steak is super tender. The duck cell, all those mushrooms are super earthy, and it adds a really nice flavor as well as the prosciutto, adds that saltiness that you want. And you put that veal broth on top, it is just out of control fire. And I completely understand why they sell out of these things every day. Of the carpaccio. This is the one. He said it's very similar to like almost a ceviche. It's kind of like an homage yeah, it's, back yeah, to Yeah, a tiradito, a ceviche. I mean, it's uh, uh, very, very fresh. Cheers. Chef grew up in Mexico and he's adding some of that Hispanic influence into his dishes here at the restaurant, including the carpaccio, which actually has more of a kind of like a ceviche vibe, but it has those fresh scallops and then those U10s, those gorgeous scallops, radishes, cilantro, a little bit of brightness on there with the acidity. These things just melt in your mouth. Now, lobster tails, um, this is a really fun presentation. Uh, it's a potato puree, a little bit infused with garlic. Mm -hmm. um, and we have uh, two little lobster tails, or Canadian, Canadian tails. And there you're putting the candy lemon, that it puts that acidity with some that uh, sweetness on it. Wow. The lobster comes on a bed of potato puree, a little bit of herbs, some vinaigrette, and a candied lemon. You squeeze the lemon on top. It's a little sweet, a little acidic, but overall, that lobster is super tender. You get some of the potatoes in there, and it is a great bite. The duck. The duck. Come on. I mean... Talk to me about what's going on here. Uh, duck. We have a great product here, too. It's, uh, it's a Canadian duck. It's a pan seared duck from a cold pan, so we can get that crispy uh, skin. And we serve it with uh, uh, caramelized onions and with a uh, green peppercorn sauce and poached pears. All right, also, chef. cheers here again. Cheers. That's the bite. Here's the duck. You have the carrots and the ginger puree on there, a poached pear, onions on the bottom, and a candied lemon. It sounds like a lot. You mix it all together, though. It is an incredible experience. It's like a journey through all these different flavors, all in one perfect bite. That's my favorite duck bite I've had. Thank I love much. the skin on the outside. Yeah, it's mm. crispy skin. <laughs> There's so many great things that you can get and try and explore when you're out here at Tardif's. Thank you so much for having us, thank Chef. You, thank you very much for being here. There you go. Cheers to you. Happy Cheers holidays. You. Happy holidays. Oh, and they also got cocktails and wine. Come on, that's a great <laughs> cocktail. Now, we're headed to the Alamo City for smoked steaks and Mexican cuisine from Monterrey. Now we're here in Castle Hills in San Antonio to go inside of a new restaurant that's serving up authentic Mexican food plus a massive smoked tomahawk. Let's go inside to Asador. Joining me now is Jose Gonzalez. He is the co-owner and head chef out here at Tu Asador. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Right in front of us, we have all this delicious food, some of the top items on the menu, some cocktails as well. But how did all of this get started? So we started basically during COVID. Uh, we started from our house. We used to do carnes asadas every, every weekend. 
Uh, it was kind of like a family tradition, so carne asada has been in, in our blood for since I was born. All these recipes are so fun. I want to start right here. You have some really traditional appetizers on the menu, but this one, I mean, it's got to be the favorite, right? Oh, yeah. So this is our queso flameado. We do it a little bit different than most restaurants. Uh, we <laughs> like to mix in the chorizo with the cheese already. We had a little uh, uh, so Lady in the Tramp moment there little, going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get a little bit of everything yeah. all mixed up in every bite. If you love cheese, there's nothing better than queso flameado, right? Oh, yeah. That's just the way it is. Mm. The queso flameado is so creamy. The chorizo in there is that fatty flavor that you want. It's a little salty, super stretchy. If you want the cheese pool, that's the one to get. If you're going to come out here, I highly recommend starting with that. Now, cheese, wine, cocktails. You have a whole cocktail menu going on as well. And you have some family members helping you out here too, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we got the whole family. Basically, my mom's back in the kitchen with me. My sister's in the, one of my sisters in the bar. Are you the only boy? Yeah, I'm the only boy and the youngest, so it's like growing up with four moms. We're but... talking to the prince then right now, yeah. right there? <laughs> oh, yeah. Enchiladas, how is this prepared? So these enchiladas are uh, prepared the authentic way. It's basically a big dish that has got the oil in the middle. You get chile colorado and other seasonings and spices uh, to season the tortilla and rolled up with queso fresco inside, topped with white onion. We got some potatoes on the side that are seasoned with that same chile colorado mix. The chile torreado, can't miss that. The enchiladas, papas on the side, chile torreado as well. Cheers. Mmm, cheers. Mm. That is really spicy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow! These enchiladas are so fresh. The queso fresco in there mixed with that bite from those raw onions. You got the tortillas that have been cooked in the oil as well, so they're nice and tender. A little bit of the papas on the side, and then you have that little chili torreado as well. You take a bite out of that, get a little spice, you get everything mixed together. It is a great dish. You have to have the queso flamiado to start, but you also have a fan favorite, the discada. Talk to me about how this dish is made. So discada is a very uh, regional dish from northern Mexico. It's usually made in uh, ranches. Uh, you get a lot of different meats together and it's kind of like a family event. But it's basically a mix of like five different meats, uh, a couple different vegetables, and they all cook at, at their own time, kind of one by one. And they all cook in its own juices and all the meats and flavors mixed together. You got the cheese in there as well. I'm gonna come in here and just, oh, look at that. This is the discada, cheers, cheers. and that's the bite. That's phenomenal. Give me some love. That is really good. <laughs> Woo! You have a little bit of the pork flavor, a little bit of the beef, the chorizo, the sausage, and it has a little bit of that cheese on top as well. You load it up inside a tortilla, and it's a very shareable dish, and it's just bomb. If you're extra hungry, there's a big steak on the menu as well, the tomahawk steak. We do a, like a reverse sear almost. It's not so much cooking it in the smoker, if not, it's just there for a little bit to get the smoky flavor, and then we throw it on the grill to give it a very good sear and finish the cooking process. Let it rest for a couple minutes and slice it up. I want to get this guy in the middle right here. A perfect medium rare, almost I'll like a medium rare that. plus. You have the garlic right here as well. Oh my gosh. The tomahawk steak is massive. It is delicious, smoked right here in house, grilled to perfection on the inside, and then it's sliced to order right there. You got the garlic on the side, the green onions, a little bit of that finishing salt as well. The Tu Asador is a great restaurant here in the Castle Hills area. Steaks, authentic Mexican food, great cocktails, and great service out here as well. Give me some love, and you guys rock. I'm going back in on this steak. This is the spot though, especially for the holidays. Coming up later on Texas Eats, we go inside an iconic San Antonio bakery to learn about Pan de Muerto. We had everything except customers when we first opened. <laughs> so don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back.